your dads uh, when you preach homilies. But I was thinking of it uh, this morning in relationship to uh, Father Dave's uh, reminding me that this needs to be brief. Uh, my mom and dad, when I was newly ordained, would generally come to my mass on, on Sundays because they didn't live too far from that parish. And my mother was always my biggest fan and would always, you know, after mass say to my dad, that was a great homily, right? And my dad would look too long. <laughs> and I realized that I, my dad was not alone because uh, my classmate was celebrating, and I think it was his 10th anniversary, or I'm not sure, 10th or 25th, whatever, all those years. When you get to my age, all the years sort of blend together. And uh, I went to his mat, the mass of, for his anniversary, and he preached, of course. And so I went afterwards went to his home, and they had a little reception, and I said to his dad, Peter did a great job, don't you? He said, in front of his son, my, my classmate, I counted seven good conclusions. How many have uh, made cursio? It always strikes me when we come to uh, Friday morning that very similar to this cursio program, there's a talk entitled The Fifth Day. Can you recall that? And it was so important uh, to help all of the, us realize it's not over, by no means. Cursio has a powerful impact on our spiritual lives but it's only the beginning of a new phase of our spiritual lives and it's the same every year here i mean this is not the end of this retreat brothers and we know that but this feast gives us a great opportunity for reflection john the baptist on two levels one a ver non-verbal the other verbal When Mary visits Elizabeth in her pregnancy, we know the scripture. As soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leapt in her womb for joy. I don't think we fully could appreciate what Elizabeth may have experienced. John the Baptist in her womb leapt for joy. Knowing that salvation was near at hand, Mary's voice affected this fetus in the womb of Elizabeth, leapt for joy. In my mind, I think the baby fetus danced and was probably kicking with joy that Elizabeth realized this is really a joyful baby. Even now in the womb, my baby is filled with joy. The joy of the priesthood is important. There are two things I think our people ask of us. Number one, primarily be holy. And they expect us to be happy, joyful people. The baby leapt for joy in the womb of Elizabeth. We're joyful today. We've experienced graces poured out upon all of us. And it's important for everyone to make, to understand that although you don't feel any different, you didn't experience perhaps anything very dramatic, don't allow the evil one to allow you even for a second to think nothing happened to me. Each one of us, each person here is different from the person you were and I was on Monday is not possible for it to be anything but that. Adoration, the talks, God has touched our lives. But we need to continue to move in that direction. And the other is the point that is verbal. And I think it's so important as priests, deacons, and seminarians to understand what John the Baptist was saying in his clear understanding of his call this is so important, his clear understanding of his call. He must increase, I must decrease. That humility is often something we can lose sight of because people are constantly, in all of our lives, complimenting us, you know. Father, I heard you did a great job at that baptism. Father, your homily was wonderful. We need to always give praise to God that he worked through us 
and to continue to direct everyone to praise and to worship with Christ Jesus. We're his instruments and only that. John the Baptist was his instruments par excellence. But he knew his calling was to direct people to Jesus. And isn't that the case with his mother Mary? To direct people to her son, always. To a deeper relationship with her son. So we go forth from this retreat with this understanding we don't leave alone. We're not leaving this campus as individuals by ourselves. But with the love of Mary, who will accompany us in our ministry to God's people by being truly a mother for each and every one of us. So praying the rosary every day. And secondly, how do we understand our role to decrease, allowing Christ to increase? I, I think adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, certainly, if it's available to you. Some are privileged to have adoration in your church chapel 24 hours a day. If not, making a holy hour there. Make a holy hour every day. I told the seminarians yesterday, uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, often said, I never knew a priest who left the priesthood who made a holy hour every day. <sighs> now, it's not easy. I'll be the first one to, to admit. But the former president of this university, Father Michael Scanlon, wrote a book entitled Appointment with God. We make appointments, don't we, with other people? Sure. I'll see you at 2 o'clock, Wednesday at 2. I'll be there, Father. I can see you 7.30 on Thursday. And we put it in our date book or our iPad or iPhone. Brothers, if you haven't decided on a time when you are fully awake and alert and able to give your time to the Lord, find that time. For me, it's early morning. For you, you may not be a morning person. It might be afternoon. But make a commitment as we go into the fifth day in the Curcio language that it's an appointment with God. And I need the strength, I need the grace that I can continue to grow in the love of Christ and in my love for Christ Jesus. So we, the, we hear the gospel of last Sunday when Jesus asks, but who do you say that I am? We can say from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, you are my everything. Nothing matters more than you. You are my everything. And if you're not there, you will be if you give him an appointment, an appointment with you alone every day. And you will grow to understand the words of John the Baptist. I must decrease. And he must increase, but first increase in us, his seminarians and his deacons and his priests.